hello everyone. Hello to a few tech traders and everyone listening to in to us outside of our offices. We're going through the weekly trading roadmap for the week starting the 12th of October 2015. And we're just going to take a quick look over at some of the adventuring risks that we have this week and how we're going to be effectively managing our risk and our money ahead of the week. Uh, obviously this is all my personal plan um, so this will largely vary from trader to trader but uh, we're going to be taking a look also at the Eurostocks, at Eurostocks 50 and Bund futures to see whether they're lining up for any potential opportunities this week. So first and foremost let's just go through what we're looking at on the week um, today, obviously, Monday is Columbus Day in the United States, so it's pretty much um, can be written off as a, a bank holiday. Uh, we're seeing already some really, really light volumes in the European session this morning, um, so do beware uh, when you're trading during these kind of conditions because it can be extremely light on volume. Um, and a lot of the technical analysis that you probably would be looking at on a normal basis just goes out of the window when there's no volume. Uh, so just do keep that in mind when trading the futures markets. Uh, we also have the Feds, Lockhart, Evans, and Brainard speaking today. Um, from a weekly risk allocation, I've put about 10% risk allocation just because you know I'm just just putting it out there just in case there is. Um, potentially any strong moves, any any sort of comments, anything that comes out of the market. I've left myself a little bit of risk allocation, but quite a lot less than uh, than the rest of the days. Moving on to Tuesday, when we start getting a little bit more uh, data, we've got the German um, CPI, as you can see in here. German CPI is a final reading. Uh, and then the German Zoo, which doesn't really move the market as much now, but really the focus of Tuesday should probably be around our UK CPI, RPI, and PPI figures. Um, with UK CPI being particularly low um, over the last few months or year, um, the BOE at the minute is obviously looking at this figure very, very closely. So if we start seeing any sort of lift in inflation, slow lifts in inflation, that we might start seeing some sort of pricing, some more aggressive pricing for a rate hike. Um, you know, a lot of the bank analysts are calling for two hikes um, in 2016. If you really look at the curve, though, um, the short-term interest rates are pretty much showing that we're not really seeing any rate hike till the really the end of 2016, if not 2017. So, you know, do be aware of that. It is quite important to keep in mind that the market's going to be very, very tuned into what happens with the UK CPI. We also have the ECB's Mersh and the Fed's Bullard speaking. Uh, I've put that on somewhat high relevant, just because of high relevance, just because of the, the UK figures and a 20% risk allocation accordingly. Moving on to Wednesday, we've got the China CPI, which is a preliminary figure. Just keep an eye on that figure. Obviously, we've seen a little bit of action over the weekend with uh, China pumping up um, this nine-year lending scheme. I haven't quite looked into the details of that yet, uh, but some calling it basically a quasi-QE. Um, whether that's that's actually the case or not, we'll have to see. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit more reading on around that, but do keep an eye on this because obviously China's been particularly uh, volatile in the last weeks and months. Uh, we also have the UK unemployment. Again, very, very important uh, with regards to our Bank of England hike expectations. With European industrial productions, US retail sales, which is pretty much going to be the focus of the day. Um, US retail sales, in my opinion, uh, kind of slowly taking the place of the NFP figure. So from NFP, the volume has started to shift towards the U.S. retail sales. Uh, so do keep an eye on this figure. We're notoriously from the U U.S. retail sales, we see a lot um, of volatility in the bond markets. So do keep an eye on U.S. bonds. The U.S. Uh, 10 years tend to move quite heavily on the U.S. retail sales. Um, so any any sort of figures that show any particular expansion, you'd expect the U.S. Uh, tenure to offer down aggressively, as opposed to if this actually uh, is a weak number, you'd expect the U.S. Treasury to have a lift in the bids. 
So taking a quick look over, we've got the obviously the PPI business inventories, not as not as uh, much focus around that. And then from a central bank policy perspective, we've got the ECB's MERS speaking and the Fed's beige book, which I don't don't really look at it. Um, some market participants tend to look at this, but I don't really see um, the value in looking at that personally. I've put this on pretty, pretty much the highest relevance because of the UK unemployment and the retail sales. I've given myself the most risk allocation for the week, 30% risk allocation on that day. Uh, moving over to Thursday, we've got the Australian employment change. You know, very important figure if you're uh, trading the Aussie dollar. You want to be taking a look at this figure very, very closely. Uh, we've got the US CPI also on that day which is again a, a huge number, very, very important number if you're looking at Fed hike expectations. So um, obviously globally we've seen quite suppressed CPI, but the Fed has notably said um, they want to be confident, they want to be confident that inflation will reach 2%. Sorry, the inflation will reach 2% before they hike. So what we're looking for is obviously if inflation, particularly core, it's the core inflation that we look at, if that is starting to trend and move closer to their longer term objective of 2%. Uh, you know, this, the closer we get to 2%, that's what we're looking for, you know, some more aggressive rate hike expectations in the market because the Fed is going to be looking at this number very, very closely. Um, after these figures, we've got the, let me just erase all this actually, we've got the US Philly Fed and then we've got a number of uh, ECB and Fed speakers. Let me just see if I can if I've got those at the minute, no, I don't. But do keep in mind, there's a, quite a few speakers from the ECB and the Fed on Thursday. I don't have them on hand right now, but um, they're going to be really quite important, obviously, for any particular market market movements. We've got personally putting in another 20% on that. Uh, I'd like to keep. Usually, uh, I've been spreading my risk at risk quite evenly. I really, a, a, apart from this day, I've shifted 20% from here. Uh, down into this region here. Um, and Friday, we're looking at the European CPI. That's a final reading, so you're not expecting as much volatility. It's the prelim numbers that move the market the most. U.S. Industrial Productions, uh, University of Michigan Consumer Confidence, and the ECB's Jazbeck speaking on Friday. Uh, overall, I've put on Friday probably a, quite a low relevance um, all in all, but I'm still putting you know 20% risk allocation just because not a lot of market market participants will be trading uh, a lot on Monday, so I'm expecting probably most of the volume to be taking place in the last four days of the week. Uh, so, giving myself a bit of opportunity to trade on Friday as well. So, moving on to the markets that I wanted to talk about, if we take a quick look over at the Euro stocks, um, we've got this is our weekly profile, which is uh, this is uh, as you guys know, this is what I like to look at every single week coming into the week to take a look at how the market's structured coming in and hopefully how we can see the market pan out for the rest of the week. Obviously we put a little bit of context around uh, what happened last week. We had two weeks ago we had a pretty strong close where the market uh, did not manage to offer and close below this really key low down in here. We kind of rejected, came back inside, and filled in all of our value in here. We actually shifted VPOC on the weeks uh, slightly higher. And then coming into last week, as you can see in here, there was a really, really crucial area, uh, which I just wanted to point out. Just around here between 31.26, as you can see here, 31.26 is the low in here. Just above that, I think, was a few ticks, a little bit higher. There's that weekly low there. Um, that was also a very key breakpoint from that week before. We closed two weeks ago at that area. And then last week, we came in, opened up in here, tested this area, left a buying tail in here, rejected, and then sought out new, vol uh, new value higher, having filled in a lot of this... Uh, value cave that we had left in the previous weeks. So, putting that into context, obviously, 
<clears throat> what are we expecting in the in this week? Obviously, let's just take a quick look at our metrics. So we've got the weekly value area high of last week coming in at 32.60, as you can see in here. The weekly value area low at 31.96. Uh, so these are really your key areas. What you want to see if you are a bull, obviously you don't want it to be coming in and filling in any of this area. You want it to keep this as a buying tail. If the market, first of all, breaches this 3196 area, and especially the 50% of last week, which is just ahead of that really um, key weekly highs you can see in there. Let's see if we can just point that out for you guys. Just give me a second. So that comes in just a tad higher at 31.89. So we've got this pretty key um, weekly high, as you can see there, at 31.89, which is really just ahead of that 50% of the week. And obviously, we just mentioned that really key value area low of the week at 31.96. So 31.96, the 50%, and then 31.89, pretty key areas for the bulls. Uh, as soon as we offer down through that, you, know, you really don't want to be seeing this fill in this area, as we just said. The more we fill in here, uh, the more we're looking like we could start you know, threatening the downside and potentially um, you know, pushing our way back into this whack value area, which we have a high at 31.10, VPOC at 3095 and then moving slightly lower, obviously, all the way down through here. We've got the weekly value area lows of that week at 30.33s. So really, if you are a bull, you really don't want to be seeing this market cut anywhere near um, this little buying tail as we saw in here. If this is to start trending a little bit more to the upside, you want to um, potentially see the market actually hold the VPOC of last week, which is 32 uh, 12, that's going to be a pretty key pivot. We've done quite a bit of volume there last week. I'd expect in the beginning parts of this week, which we can see already on Monday, we're sort of filling out this area. This little cave in here potentially needs a little bit more filling, uh, which you can see we've done a little bit of auctioning already in this region and a little bit higher. But effectively, if, if this is aggressively bullish, you want to see it hold. If it comes down to this VPOC, maybe pinch through, get back above. If it holds above, you want to see it move higher and test attack that value that weekly value area high at 3260. If we can get above this region in here um, and then hold, that could give us a nice little launch pad to attack this key region in here, which I just wanted to highlight for you guys. Just take a look. There's that really key previous weekly value weekly uh, inside week that we broke. We you could see we broke in here came back inside and then we had a pretty heavy week to the downside. That next week we came in and actually tested that area and held it as resistance. So that area is pretty key, these 3284s for um, the bulls. If we can actually take that region out um, and then even use this as a base, that could be a really good launch pad for some you know, much higher prices. Now what do I foresee up there if we do get up there? There's some key little regions that I'm looking at. Uh, taking a look obviously back at this really big week that we saw all the way down into here. If we toggle this week, just toggle that for there. There was a previous weekly VPOC here at around 33.44s, 43s. Uh, it was a nice little pivot when we came and traded it that week. So for me, I'm actually quite liking this region in here. We've got that previous VPOC, as you can see here, it extended out till here. We did quite a bit of volume just above that. And the area I'm looking at is 33.41s. Uh, we had gotten through it on this day. On the Friday, we came up and tested it pretty much to that tick, to that area, 33.41s. We saw some pretty good resistance. There's a good high volume node there, as you can see, high volume node and a, uh, a pivot point. So I'm liking that area for just an initial scalp potentially to take, if it comes back into this region, to test uh, right back up to possibly these highs. Uh, I see this good risk reward in that trade. If it gets up there, I think there could be a nice little trade to take. If we get through that region, obviously we've got uh, this area I'm not really keen on getting to, um, you know, if we're just trading in this region, I'd actually probably 
much rather get long above here if we actually get above and hold, let's say, between 10 and 15 ticks above and we can actually build a base above it. Uh, I'd like to start getting long potentially for a move up through this region. The next real area I'm looking at um, is this around this buying tail, as you can see, of this day. This is, I believe, uh, was a Tuesday of that week, if I'm not mistaken. But in any case, if we just take a look, now that was a Wednesday actually. This was the Monday. This was the Monday. This was the Tuesday. This is the Wednesday. Small little buying tail we left in here. Again, the high of the day on the next day came in at that, you know, basically the low print of the buying tail. And that's just ahead of, again, another nice high volume node, which I like. High of the day, high volume node above it. I think there's good. Uh, risk reward and potentially getting you know, just a nice little fade off that area, a nice little scalp trade uh, you could potentially take in there. Ultimately, once we're back into this value area in here, you don't really want to be taking a long-term view to the bear side, uh, but these are kind of short-term scalp trades. If we get above this value area low, as you can see in here, and we're holding above these key areas, you know, they could potentially be a trend-like move up into this big value area. The VPOC on this week, just mind you, is really all the way back up here, as you can see at 3047. So it's got a very long way to travel until it actually tests the VPOC of this week. Uh, so just do bear that in mind when you're trading uh, the euro stocks if we do actually see a bullish move up into that region. Right, let's just close that up, take a quick look over the buns before we close this up. The buns having a pretty interesting um, formation, putting this into context again, you can see we've had the NFP Friday was this day in here. A um, little bit weird drawing, but we had an NFP Friday in here, which we left nice little selling tail. Um, n relatively weak close for that very low print. It was a bit of a euphoric move, I'd say. The, the market just kind of had this quick euphoric move to the upside, exhausted. There's quite a bit of exhaustion, I'd say, in here. There's quite a bit of an exhaustive move. And we start trickling down. Um, the next week we opened up in here, we had this big cave, which we highlighted. It had filled in that cave, you can see in here, closed below the value area low of this week, and then tested all the way down to the value area lows of that week. As you can see here, it was around um, 55, 88 and 5588 as you can see today is actually our buying tail low the, the low of today actually on Monday is the value area low of last week which we'll just put that into context now value value area low of last week in the buns is at 5583s it's currently the low of the week now we just come into that area we found a bit of um, some buyers the markets now made its way back up through the VPOC of last week at 156.06. So that is the VPOC of last week. Uh, so we're currently trading above that. That gives us the context that we could try and test that value area high of last week at 156.54s. Pretty decent little level because we've got, again, high volume node and the value area high just sitting there. If we can get above here and actually start building a bit of a base above that ledge, that volume ledge and value area high, that's going to give us the indication that we're probably going to try and attack the high near, you know, towards the high of the week of last week. Now, mind you, last week was an inside week. So we know that we've got, let's put that again into a bit of context. Close this up a little bit. There we go. So we had the week before that high in here, low in here. The week, yes, last week was low in here, high in here. So this week's range, this whole week's range is within this range, which technically makes it an inside week. So having said that, we've got a quite a bit of you know, um, consolidation and a bit of energy, I think, built into this area. Particularly, I would like a break to the downside more than to the upside. We've been holding this area between 75s and 83s for quite a while now. I think if we can get a break below that, specifically if we can offer below these uh, 83s and then make our move to the downside, that would be great. Um, you know, con 
excuse me, um, on, on the contrast to that, if we make a move up to the inside week high, which is at 157.53, so again, we could see a pretty decent move, uh, but I don't think the lower we get in yields, because the higher we get in price, the higher we get in price, the lower we get in yield. Uh, the lower the yield is, I, I, I tend to see that the inside day breaks to the high, uh, through the highs, are not as good. So, for example, if we've got an inside day, something like this, um, and we break this inside day high, you know, we tend to kind of flutter, stay around the inside day high, and then potentially build a trend. Usually to the downside, if there's been a strong trend like this to the, down, to the upside, and then we get an inside day, and we break um, this one time framing, we tend to see on the break of the inside day low, once it ticks through it, we tend to see a quite a sharp move to the downside, which I like because you can see the volume, you can see the uh, the volume coming into the market, you can see uh, big players coming into the market, and you can trade that very, very, um, very easily on the price ladder. So I think that's quite an interesting um, aspect to be keeping in mind if you're trading these setups throughout the week. That's pretty much the structure as we have it now on the buns. I've gone through the structure on uh, the euro stocks. Now, if we break to the upside, there's not much I can show you. If we do break to the downside, however, really quickly, just going to say if we break down, really the next level we're looking at 155.39s, value area low of last of that week. And here was a close of this week and around the lows of this week as well. So really that's the area. If you're playing a short through this area, you can see that double bottom weekly low. Um, that is probably an area you want to be looking to cover. I don't see any areas in here that I want to scale out on. I'd probably, if I'm short here, I'm not getting out, um, you know, for at least another 30, 30, 35 ticks. Uh, so I think there's some good 30 tick upside. If you see the volume, you know, your, your stop shouldn't be more uh, than three to four ticks. If you can really see the volume come in, if there's not much and you want to just sit in it short, you want to be getting short below 83s and your stop ultimately you know, it should be above 88s. You know, you only want to see above that. Uh, so if that plays out, that's how I'm going to be looking at the trade. Obviously, we are now moving, making our way to the upside, looking less likely at the minute, uh, but obviously still a possibility in the week ahead. In any, in any case, thank you guys very much for listening. Uh, I'll be doing a price ladder analysis stream tomorrow at 12 p.m., so Tuesday, 12 p.m. Tune in um London time that is tune in for some price ladder analysis and then towards the end of the week I'll be again in for the weekly market wrap stay tuned good luck for the rest of the week and we'll uh, speak soon traders take care bye bye